Hey everyone, in today's video, I'm going to show you how to use Flask Session B extension. So this is different from the session object in Flask, even though they're closely related. And the reason why you use this extension is because you want to have server side sessions instead of the client side sessions. So I'll show you an example in a moment using the default method of creating sessions in Flask. And then I'll show you how to set up Flask Session, which we'll see is pretty easy to do. So the first thing is I have a very simple Flask app here that doesn't do anything. It just I instantiates the app and sets a secret key. My secret, you'll need the secret key anytime you're using sessions. And I'm importing the session object here. So what I'll do is I'll create two routes, one for setting the session and one for getting the session. So the first will be for setting. So I'll call this set. And it's going to take in just a value. It doesn't really matter what I pass in. It's just for demonstration purposes. I'll call this set session. And I'm going to take that value that I passed through the URL. And I'm going to take the session object and create a key called value and pass in the actual value that I use. And I'll return an F string saying something like the value you set is, and then I'll pass in value there. And then I'll create a second route for getting the session. So we'll just call this get, and I'll call this get session and doesn't take in a value. And I want to simply return uh, the value in the session is, and then I can do session dot get, and then I need double quotes here. I need value. That's the name of the key. And then that will be the end of the string. So let's go ahead and try this. So I'll go to my app. I'll set the session. I'll call this uh, Python as the value. I see the value you set is Python. And then if I go to get, I see the value in the session is Python. So this is exactly what I want. I passed in the value in the URL and it was set in the session. So now I'm going to open up my developer tools and I'll go over to the cookies and I have this session here. So this comes from my Flask app, right? And we see there's some stuff in here that I can't read, um, but this means something. And what it is, is it's encoded in base64. So base64 is just a method of encoding data and I'll show you how to decode it. I'm going to just copy this line. So the first line, uh, the zero index is what I want. And I'll paste it in here and I'll remove like the zero, the colon and the quotes to get just the, the letters and the numbers. And if I hit decode, I see down here value Python. So that's exactly what I passed in. And just to show you that, I can do it with anything. Instead of Python, I'll pass my name. So the value set is Anthony. This updates, right? So it ends in J9. I just need to refresh this until it uh, updates. All right, let me go to Git actually. And just wanna make sure this updates. I'm going to delete this and then set it again. So set Anthony. And then now we have it here, okay. Yeah, it wasn't updating for some reason. So I'll paste this in here and then I'll remove the extra characters and I see value Anthony. So anything I pass in there that gets set on the session will be visible here. So the reason why you want to use server side sessions is because you want to have some session information that is associated with a user using your app. But at the same time, you don't want anybody to see it. So if someone knew how Flask set sessions, then they can easily decode your session if you're using client side sessions and they can see the values here. So that's why it's always recommended you don't put anything that is sensitive in these sessions. But if you use a server side session, then the session is kind of set on your server. So you can put anything in there that you want and it's as secure as the rest of your app, right? So if your app's not secure as a whole, your server's not secure, then of course it can be problematic. But assuming everything is secure or on your end, your server, then the server side session should be secure. So what I'll do is I'll set up Flask session and I'll show you how this works. So I need to install it. So let me stop my app. Uh, pip install Flask dash, dash session. And in addition to that, I'm going to use Flask SQL Alchemy to handle the a server side session. So normally you wouldn't have session information in a database, but for simplicity purposes, I'll do it here. Uh, but there are other methods of saving the actual session data somewhere on your server. And I'll show you the options in just a moment. But uh, pip install flask 
SQL Alchemy is what I want. All right, so first let me set up the SQL Alchemy stuff. So from uh, Flask SQL Alchemy, import uh, SQL Alchemy capital SQL. And then uh, I need to set a database location. So SQL Alchemy uh, database URI. And this will be SQLite. And then I'll just put it here. So I want this db.sqlite3. I'm not going to set up like a real table, but we'll see in a moment what happens when I use Flask session with this. So I'll instantiate the DB. So DB equals uh, SQL Alchemy, and I'll pass an app. Just know if you're using the create app pattern, then you would instantiate this without the app, and then later you would do db.init app. And it will be the same for the session as well. But here I'm just passing the app directly to SQL Alchemy. And what I want to do now is I want to instantiate Flask session. So first, let me put a placeholder here. So uh, from Flask underscore session, import session, capital S. So note that this one from Flask session is capital S, and then the one from Flask is lowercase s, right? So now I want to instantiate this. So I can do session app. And normally you would have a variable here to represent the uh, instance of whatever extension you're instantiating. And I can do that here. But normally it's the lowercase version of the class. But you see this won't work because I have session here. And if I were using the create app pattern where I wasn't passing the uh, app here directly, I would use a dot init app later, then I would definitely need this. So uh, one way to do it is just call this sesh. Uh, just so it's not confused with the session from Flask. But in this particular video, this won't actually do anything. But if you're using the create app pattern and you do init app, then you'll need uh, sesh or whatever you name it. But you can't name it just session like you normally would uh, when it comes to these kind of extensions. So now that I have this, I need to configure it, right? So let's go to the documentation for Flask session and just go down to configuration. And really the most important part is the session type right? So you can have null, which isn't really useful, but you can also have Redis, memcached, file system, MongoDB, and SQL Alchemy. So these are all forms of handling storing the actual data associated with the session because it won't be stored in the cookie anymore where somebody can view it like I did a moment ago. Instead, it's going to be saved somewhere on a server. So it can be saved in Redis, in memcached, on the actual file system, in a MongoDB database, or in a SQL database through SQL Alchemy. And that's the one I'll be using. So I'll just copy this and the configuration value is session type. So app config uh, session type. And then I'll pass in SQL Alchemy there. And in addition to doing that, because I'm using a Flask SQL Alchemy, I need to set the session SQL Alchemy configuration value. And it takes in an instance of SQL Alchemy. And just note that if you're using a different uh, back in for this, like Redis or MongoDB, they have configuration values for that as well. So if you're using Redis, you just need to give the URI to the actual Redis instance. So here, the configuration value is session SQL Alchemy. So I'll put that in there. And what this is going to be is the actual instance of SQL Alchemy. So this DB here. So the only thing I need to do is I need to move this down because it hasn't been created when I uh, have that line there. And I need to take this DB and simply put it there. So I need to instantiate this first and then just pass the DB to the session SQL Alchemy configuration value. And then I can instantiate Flask session. And as far as Flask session is concerned at this point, you don't have to do anything else directly. Everything here will continue working the same, but it will be converted to server-side sessions. So what I want to do is I want to create everything in the database. So I'll just put db.create all here. I'll run the app once and I'll stop it. And then I can comment this out, right? Because I don't need to create it over and over again. And I have this db.sqlite created. So I'll just open it up and I'll just look at the tables. And we see there's a sessions table. And if I do dot schema, we see it has ID, session ID, data, uh, expiry ID, and unique for a session ID. So this was given to you by Flask Session, so you didn't have to do this yourself. You don't have to set up the table yourself. 
This is all done when it sees that the session type is SQL Alchemy and it has access to the DB object. So now I can start using this. So let me go over to my app. And what I'll do is I'll clear all the session cookies and I'll set it. So we'll call this server now for the session. And we see I have this up here, but instead of being that base 64 uh, encoded string, now it's this, it's this value uh, 5C6 and so on. So this is something I can't just decode. And what happens is if I open up my database and then select star from sessions, we see the session that I'm concerned with. So that 5C64 is the exact ID that I have in the cookie. And here is where the data is stored. So it's stored in a format where you can't actually see it uh, through this command line SQL light tool, but it's there. Just know that it's there. So if I run the app again and I go to uh, Git after setting the server, I see uh, the value in session is server. And we see the actual session cookie is just this. So what's happening here is it still has to create a cookie because you're representing a session for a particular user. But instead of having the data for that session stored in the cookie as well, there's just an ID stored in the session. And then Flask will take that ID, query the database, and get the data from the session and then use it normally. So no one can fake this because of the security that's built into cookies itself. So if someone were to modify a cookie and change the ID, then Flask will recognize that and say that this cookie is invalid and it would ignore the ID. So that's it for working with a Flask session. So if you wanna have server-side sessions in your app, you can see it's pretty easy to use. It's just basically setting up and then you don't have to use it directly. You just continue using the regular Flask session object as normal. So if you have any questions about anything I've done in this video, feel free to leave a comment down below. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel already, please subscribe. So thank you for watching and I will talk to you next time.